Hey, what is going on guys? Inferno LH here, and today welcome back to another r slash Terraria, where I recap the top posts from the past week. Item idea. The guide to humility prevents you from collecting hearts when at full health and stars when at full mana. Oh, so this would be more of like a, a multiplayer thing, because currently whenever you defeat an enemy and they drop a heart on the ground that you pick up, which just heals you, You'll pick them up even if you're at full health, which in multiplayer kind of sucks because you're just stealing them from your teammates. That's happened to me a lot where I'm almost dead, but my teammates still at full health and they take all the hearts from the boss. So this would actually be a nice addition to the game. Dang, the same person as the top two posts of the week? Okay. The lucky item idea. D20 of fate. Okay, so this is like a D&D dice. Reveals your luck. After rolling five ones in a row, I've reached the conclusion that today might not be my day. Okay, so this is an interesting item. So it'll just show you what your luck levels are at in the game because currently most people probably don't even know that luck is in the game, but it, it's a feature in the game and it's hidden. There's no way of seeing what your luck levels are. So an item that shows that would be actually be pretty helpful. If you don't know what luck is, it's basically just a mechanic that shows you if you don't know what luck is, it's basically just a mechanic in the game that will change the drop rates of items. So the higher your luck, the more likely you are to get item drops from enemies, and the lower your luck, well, you're not going to get them as much. Magic Mirror Concepts Made By Me. Ooh, actually, ooh, these looks like they'll be cool. So the Magic Mirror of Return, so it's basically just a return potion which teleports you back to where you died so that's actually pretty cool and then the wormhole mirror which is just infinite uses to teleport to any oh my gosh sorry guys if you can hear my cat he's going crazy okay <laughs> he's <laughs> sorry about that uh so the wormhole mirror so it'll just teleport you to any member that's currently in your world with infinite uses which is just great magic mirror of death lets you teleport to your last death spot oh this is the one I got them mixed up from before. This will teleport you to where you died before. The return one will teleport you to where you were last at before you teleported. And then the checkpoint mirror. Oh, so this one's different. I've, this isn't based off of potion. Let's you teleport to your checkpoint, which can be placed, double click, where you're standing and will always uh, stay there until you change positions, infinite uses. Okay, so it'll let you teleport to basically wherever you want. So if you go to somewhere on the map, you can leave a little marker and you can just teleport to there whenever you want. The quad mirror, okay. Oh, so it's just a mix of all the mirrors that you've made before. So you can probably swap through each setting on it, whatever one you want. And then the quad mirror again, this will just show you what the selecting between each mode will do. And then the telephone is just an upgrade of the of the shell phone. Okay, so this is a further upgrade of the shell phone. And I could see an issue with this because the shell phone already has a lot of different areas you could teleport to. So adding this other accessory, which is a good idea, this is really nice to have, but there's going to be a lot of modes that you're going to have to swap through. I could see that being painful. And then the telephone again. Yeah, swapping through all the different modes. It's gonna take forever to swap to the one you want. I feel like there could be a better way to change that. But overall, this is a great idea. I do like this accessory. I Having an infinite amount of uses of those specific potions would just be great. If you are enjoying this video so far, could you please like and subscribe to my channel? I would really appreciate it. I will also leave the link to my Discord server in the description of this video if you want to go ahead and join that. But anyways, let's get right back to the posts. More accessories, this person again. Got the Bloodlust Circlet. Enemies killed by you drop special hearts that, instead of healing, give the player who picks them up offensive buffs. Ooh, so it'll increase your damage or attack speed or critical chance. That's actually pretty cool. I like this. And would this be instead of the health uh, drops? If so, I, that would make sense. That'd be more of a way to balance it out, but that's a cool one. And then the, the crown, enemies killed by you drop special hearts that instead of healing, gives the player who picks them up defensive buffs. Okay, so dodge percentage, defense, okay. Minus aggro. Yeah, I like these. So these would actually be cool accessories and based off of the color and design that you've made here, it would be dropped from the Eater of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu, but 
yeah, these are pretty cool. I'd like, I wouldn't mind these being in the game. I just got gifted this game by my friend. What to expect? Ooh, nice. Uh, <laughs> wait, what is this message by your friend? <laughs> okay, we're, I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore that. But realistically though, there's a lot to learn with this game because the game doesn't really teach you that much. There is a tutorial. You could play the tutorial first. That'll tell you a little bit. But the game doesn't teach you much. You have to figure it out all for yourself. So definitely use the wiki to help you out or maybe some YouTube videos online you could look up. That would be helpful. That's what I would do. Generating a world. Both are bad paths. You know, realistically, they are both kind of bad paths, but they both have their upsides, you know? They both have great items. I usually choose the Crimson biome just because I think in my first world that I ever made, it was Crimson, and I just stuck with it. So I usually stick with Crimson. What do you choose? Let me know in the comments below. Which, which evil biome do you usually choose when, when creating a new world? Fighting a goblin army in master mode be like, <laughs> you get all the NPCs are dying and leaving and then there's you just suffering dying over and over again I remember the first time that I played master mode was in the, the, the goblin army showed up in early pre hard mode and it was it sucks dude I died like so many times I probably died at least 30 times before the event ended just because I wasn't set up for it and they deal so much damage and they can destroy all the doors on your house and just bust in and kill you they'll spawn trap you it's crazy dude it was <laughs> it was not a good experience let me let me tell you that it was not good here you go buddy I'm really disappointed in the lack of Medusa fan art during this current trend you know now that you mention it I don't think I've ever seen Medusa fan art and uh oh Okay, it's like a, oh yeah, because they were doing this trend I, from the last video. People were making humanoid versions of all the bosses, so that's what this is, I guess. And I guess you kept it on brand with the pros being in that certain spot there. <laughs> Cathedral. Oh wow, that is that is looking really cool. All these 3D builds that people create in this game, they look so cool. But then I think about it and realize that on practicality-wise, they, they're just not useful because you can't actually go inside of them but they do look sick so it's like once they build this they're pretty much done they they never really go back to the build because you can't actually use it an interesting idea though that you, what you could do is uh, near the door of any of these houses these 3d ones since you can't go inside them you could place an invisible teleporter which will teleport you to someplace underground or something and it could act as though it's the inside of the building just an idea can we add some variety to whip attacks oh so like the swing animation changes because usually right now i think it's only like one animation so different ways of swinging it would be interesting just a little quality of life addition the real best complex item to get the onk shield eh. there's the terra boots which does take a little time and then the shell phone <clears throat> that one definitely takes a lot of time but then the mixed balloons accessory, I forget what it's called, but it has the horseshoe and the balloons on it. This one actually is surprisingly difficult to get. And I don't think I've actually gotten the full combination of all the balloons and the horseshoe, but it is a pretty decent accessory because it gives you like a triple jump with this and immunity to fall damage. So previously this was like the best pre hard mode accessory and just because it's practically wings, but not really, but it's difficult to get because of all the balloons. The horseshoe isn't too bad, but the balloons do take a while to get because you have to get like a sandstorm and a bottle. Those don't even spawn in every world, so you could t t create like 10 worlds and never even get one. And then the cloud and a bottle, which that one's not too difficult to get. Those usually spawn everywhere. And the final one, I believe that's uh, tsunami in a bottle or something. I can't even remember how to get that one. I just wanted either Ruthless or Mythical. Oh my gosh. Dude. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I guess you're just uh, unlucky. And this is a sped up version because you could easily skip that if you were going that fast. But that... It happens, you know. That's why people always joke about online on how the Goblin Tinkerer, he just... He's stealing your money. He's practically scamming you because... You could even have a pretty decent accessory. You could pay him money to make it better, and then he'll just break the weapon and give it back to you. It's like, it's pretty much just a scam sometimes. 
Dryad has a Christmas tree. What a creative way to call me a log. Can I take it off now? You know, that would actually be pretty cool if during the Christmas uh, time of the year, so just the month of De December during the Christmas event in the game, it would be pretty funny or cool if they actually changed the sprite of the Dryad to be a Christmas tree. Cause she is kind of a plant in a, a way, right? I guess. So being a, a Christmas tree sprite would actually be pretty cool to be in the game. We must make this format a thing. Dear Shark on Land, what is your wisdom? Cultist is easier than Golem, but harder to farm. You know, that's a fair point, actually. The Cultist really isn't too bad. I usually get him in one try, but he definitely is difficult to farm because he definitely doesn't spawn very often. So after the pillars, so to fire him, you have to destroy all the pillars and the Moon Lord each time and then wait for him to respawn because he doesn't respawn immediately after that. But I'm not really sure why you would even want to farm him because it's not like he has any good drops or anything or drops any good money. So I wouldn't recommend. But anyways, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy, could you please like and subscribe to my channel? I would really appreciate it. I will also leave the link to my Discord server in the description of this video if you want to go ahead and join that. But one last thing, just a quick shout out to my members. We got Excalibur here, thanks for being a member. If you would like to become a new member today, just tap the join button next to the subscribe button. There's various different tiers, each all have their own perks. Uh, the first tier only being 99 cents. Uh, you don't have to become a member, but I do really appreciate anyone that does. But anyways, that is going to be it, and goodbye.